Okay, this culture is a what would be considered a wound culture. This is a drainage from purulent wound from a 28-year-old woman whose hand was scratched by a rose thorn uh, from her garden. So on this particular culture, we have a 5% sheep blood plate, we have a chocolate plate, and we have a McConkie's. We do not have a CNA present on, on this particular culture. All right, so let's go ahead and first take a look at the sheep blood plate. Now, being that it's a superficial wound, it's possible that we could pick up some normal flora because basically we're, we're collecting, the specimen was collected from the skin. And um, on this particular culture, I'm not seeing any kind of normal flora. Sometimes normal flora can get kind of overrun if you have one particular dominant organism. So you really kind of have to look uh, for any, but I don't see anything on here. Now, whenever we have a sheep blood plate, one of the things we always have to do is we always have to look for hemolysis. So when looking for hemolysis, what we do is we, I can't do it here for you, but basically we tilt the plate and with some kind of light source coming from behind, we look at the colonies and look for beta hemolysis. Now there isn't so much hemolysis around the colonies, but whenever a sheep blood plate is set up, it's always stabbed. It always needs to be stabbed with the loop in the setup process or the inoculation process. So we can see here that there is some hemolysis in that stab. Now for now that's not really significant but uh, I won't go off on that subject but that pertains more to beta hemolytic streptococci. But anyway I can see some beta hemolysis around that stab. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our chocolate plate. <clears throat> okay, so once again here, I just see one colony type. I'm not seeing uh, any normal flora. Now, one thing that's kind of peculiar uh, is that we, you know, we have kind of these very healthy, creamy-looking uh, beta hemolytic colonies on our sheep blood and our on our chocolate, as far as size and texture, they basically look the same, but they're kind of golden in color. And one organism that shows that uh, that pattern is Staphylococcus aureus, right? Aureus, AU is the symbol for gold, and therefore uh, it, its colonies can be gold in color. Okay, so let's go ahead here and let's take a look at our last plate, our McConkies. Now our McConkies is no growth. So the significance of that is really it's just telling us that we are not dealing with any kind of gram-negative rods. And when I say gram-negative rod, I'm talking about these kind of bigger, healthy gram-negative rods like members of Enterobacteriaceae or Pseudomonas, as opposed to kind of more fastidious, kind of wimpy gram-negative rods like Haemophilus. So uh, what to do now with this culture? Um, a, normally, a culture like this is going to be held for 48 hours, um, but at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to work, you know, it looks like there's just one colony type. We're going to go ahead and work that thing up. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, even though I said it looks like Staph aureus, so we really should probably do a gram stain on that organism just to find out if it is, in fact, the gram-positive cocci that we think it is. And then we'll take it from what uh, we'll go from there as far as working it up. But based on what I think, my experience as a microbiologist, I think it's Staph aureus. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, send out a, a preliminary report so the physician can get some kind of idea of what's going on with this patient's uh, wound. So what I'm going to report out is no normal skin flora, many probable. Staphylococcus aureus, identification and susceptibility testing to follow.